when I first got elected, one of my constituents asked me when I got home, and trust me, after a session, you're always glad to get home. He said, how was it serving in the Louisiana legislature during a legislative session? And I said, well, it's kind of like the Texas Longhorn. There's a point here, a point here, and a lot of bull in between. <laughs> well, that was my first session. <laughs> As they went on, maybe about the second and the third, and finally we got to this one, and it, I thought it was kind of like looking at the Texas Longhorn again, although this time he was charging at me, and at a very fast rate of speed. And then, of course, on Thursday, when I found out the governor vetoed um, the funding through his line item power of the Dabney Prison Facility, that's when I realized, no, it's not like looking in the face of the uh, Texas Longhorn. It's like sitting underneath his tail. And I don't want to tell you what he's doing to Central Louisiana, but that's what he's doing, okay? But in any event, it was a very tough session. And, and I left there thinking this would probably be our toughest session. Now I think I'm wrong. I think we are looking for four years of very radical reforms for Louisiana, all part of the governor's national agenda to become part of the national political scene. And that national political scene, in my opinion, does not resonate very well with good old Louisiana. And I'll tell you why. You look at what happened in central Louisiana, and just this governor has a philosophy or ideology of wanting to privatize things. He thinks that government can't run things efficiently, number one. Number two, he doesn't realize when government runs something, government doesn't have to generate a profit. Government has to break even and provide services to its taxpayers, and provide good services to its taxpayers. But his philosophy is to go out, solicit political contributions, like he does in the prison situation, about $150,000, and sell off a part of Louisiana to a private company to come in and run it for us, because he tells all of us, we can't run it right. Well, I beg to differ. You elect us to run things. When we privatize something, we're telling you, the citizens that elect us, that we can't do it right. We can't do it efficiently. But I beg to differ that we can. We can run things efficiently. We can make the cuts, and we've made it. We have reduced the size of government tremendously. But under this governor, he's reducing the size of your government at your peril. You're still paying $40 to $50 a day to house an inmate in a davity facility. He wants to privatize that facility. He privatizes that facility. That money doesn't get saved by you. That money goes to that private company who makes a profit. And those are profits that aren't going to stay in Louisiana. They're going around the United States to shareholders. We're shareholders in a private company. And most of them are notoriously bad in terms of their record of public safety. Escapes, all kinds of things. Not to mention the internal problems that occur in prisons. You look at the two private prisons we have in Louisiana right now, and you compare the number of cell phones that get confiscated in a six-month period. Now, cell phones allow an inmate to contact the outside, to commit crimes outside the prison walls. 144 were confiscated in, in a private prison in Louisiana. You compare that record to the ones confiscated in the boils, two. There's a big difference. Now you might say, well, maybe the guards and the boils don't know how to confiscate cell phones properly. Not true. Because the guards and the boils get picked up and brought to the private prison to do the raid to confiscate the cell phones. Because the private prison guards aren't trained to do that kind of work. So we worked very diligently. We worked very hard to provide that funding. We got some of it in the House of Representatives by taking $6 million out of the extra funding for Avoyles, because Avoyles was going to have to build more infrastructure, build more dormitories to house the inmates in Dabney. So rather than go through the construction and the expense of the $6 million to do that, we put that money back into the funding of Dabney. Chris Hazel helped us, Herbert Dixon helped us, a lot of the, delega the delegation of Central Louisiana really came forth and helped us. It got to the Senate where Senator Karen Carter Peterson and Senator Gallo led the charge and got the rest of the money. And that was tough to do. It all got put back in there, all to come under the veto pin of the governor. Well, when he vetoed that, he slapped each and every one of us taxpayers in the face. And I don't take that lightly. Because this is the one prison in Louisiana where we get it right. We actually have these inmates that are housed in this prison facility. 
that go out into this community. They work for the city of Pineville, they work for the city of Ball, they work for the England Air Park Authority. They do over $7 million of work and services in this community. So when you pay that $40 or $50 a day to house that inmate, you actually get a service back. We lose those services by that veto. We're now paying to house inmates that are not going to provide those services. All of these municipalities now have to go out and hire labor to do that work. And some of them can't afford it. And these municipalities and these uh, other governmental entities were paying part of this bill. They were paying some of the prison guard salaries. They were paying some of the transportation. That doesn't make good economic sense. It's not true. And watch what will happen. That facility in Dabney will not stay vacant long. A private prison company will come in and rent it, and it will operate it, and they'll be importing inmates from another state to come sit in this community and make this community less safe. So I tell you now, it is time to stand up. It is time to recognize what's happening. Some people say you're getting your toe pinched. No, our toes are getting smashed here in Central Louisiana. And we need to stand up and we need to fight. And we need to make this governor realize that we're not going to sit under the bull anymore. We're going to remove the bull. And we're going to stop all the BS. We're getting serious. And it's time to react. 